Hi everyone and welcome to Campus Channel. I'm here with ESSEC Business School and we're going to be talking about that master in strategy and management of international business. Here with us today we have the, the academic director Anne-Flore mamon Larofi. How are you Anne-Flore? Very nice, thank you. And uh, we also have Alain Belgassem. She is a former student and she is now a strategy and business analyst at NG Solution. She will be with us today. How are you Alain? Very fine, thanks. Thanks to you, they're here to answer your questions, but first we're going to start with the pitch. And Flo, you know the drill, you know what's going to happen. You're going to have 60 seconds to tell us about this master. It's your turn. Are you ready? Yes, I am. As a master in strategy and management of international business, is a very disruptive and innovative program that was launched uh, more than 20 years ago at ESSEC Business School as a first program dedicated to international business. So we aim at um, welcoming students who uh, want to uh, trigger a new um, job opportunities and new developments for their career, be it in consulting, be it in corporate strategy, or be it in the management of digital innovation and transformation. Each year we have more than 200 students who study in this program and uh, all of them want to challenge themselves in a multicultural environment, also taking advantage of all the alumni positions and networking events we can arrange for them. Of course, the curriculum is organized around uh, blocks of, um, I would say, compulsory, soft and hard skills. We also try to develop your cultural intelligence within the program. All right, it was perfect. We had a bit of delay, so it's not your fault. Don't worry, it was very good. Thank you. We're going to dig a, a, a bit deeper and we're going to start with the first question. And it is, what's the difference between uh, the Programme Grand École of l'ESSEC and this master? So maybe I will take this question, Alain, yes. if you don't mind. Um, so, <laughs> so basically, we, we don't aim at the same uh, candidates. Uh, when you do um, uh, not, um, the Master in uh, Strategy and Management of International Business, you already have a little bit of an idea of what you would like to do afterwards. Like it's not in a discovery, you know, uh, environment. Um, you, you already know whether you want to do consulting or not, for example, because when you join the program, you choose your track from the application. Also, you, um, you are looking after courses which are very much uh, applied, learning by doing courses, so you're not here, I would say, to browse for the types of courses you may take, but you really uh, accept the fact of being guided through a curriculum which has been designed, I should say, by myself, of course, taking the feedback of the, uh, for our advisory board and of the students, but yet you don't have so much choices as compared to the Grand École. Uh, I would say this is really in the mindset that you have, you see, do you want to really be plug and play after the program in two years? Or do you still want to browse a little bit to, to find your, you know, your past or your uh, options after ESSEC? All right, so, th so the difference has nothing to do with the quality or the level of the, of the program. It's more like what you want and what you're expecting from your studies. Exactly, Guillaume. Alors, the quality of the program, I think we don't, we don't need to, to prove that. We are ranked number three best master in management worldwide by the QS ranking. And we are number one return on investment. So the quality is here for sure. Um, we have the same ratio of ESSEC professors. We have uh, a lot of um, international um, experts um, because the majority of our professors, even if they are external lecturers, for example, in this program, they hold a PhD. So we, we have people who are really experts in their area, even though they are working in a company. So no, there is no difference at all in terms of quality. Uh, the quality is optimal, is recognized, is acknowledged. I can even say that in terms of workload, the SMIB is a little bit more demanding uh, than the Grand Ecole, probably, because it's a very, um, it's a very packed uh, curriculum. So uh, maybe Alem can, can have a, a testimony on that, about the workload. I don't know, Alem, if you want to share your experience. Yes, I was, I was going to ask you, Alem, uh, why did you choose the master? And what would you say regarding everything that has been said? Uh, so actually, I wanted to do uh, like the SMIP because I knew, like I'm an engineer uh, and I knew that I didn't want to work as a technical, uh, do some technical stuff. So I wanted to have like more global visions and to better have uh, like a better understanding of the business because as an, engin as an engineer, sorry, you are like in a bubble 
and you think that everything is possible but no you have like some geopolitics to take into account finance uh, marketing many many uh, subjects to take into account so that's why i wanted to broaden my uh, skills and knowledge and i have also chosen uh, the smibs because i wanted to be with people um, of my age uh, i mean people who have more experience who have already a diploma and who can bring me um like some knowledge and uh give me advices uh according to their experience and this is what i got uh, at uh, SMIP. okay that's very precise thank you alem you talked about like other students and how you had an engineer background what are the language requirements for international students and what level do they need to have is it in french in english can you tell us um, about it maybe uh, and maybe and floor you can start with an answer Yes, so um, the program is fully taught in English. Um, so depending on whether you join during the Master 1 or the Master 2, uh, the requirements are not going to be exactly the same because if you join for the first one, Master 1, for, for, so, sorry, for the first year in Master 1, um, even though your courses are in English, we are also going to offer you some English courses. Okay, so we can uh, strengthen your English level, even though we still ask for uh, TOEIC, TOEFL, you know, tests uh, for application. When you join directly for the second year, uh, there is no time to learn for English. Uh, so basically, we request a very high level of English, which is close to uh, bilingual or at least fluent, fluent level. I can also uh, talk because I think it's important, uh, even though the program is taught in, in English, we are in France, okay, and we are in a French environment. And a lot of uh, the students would like, ideally, to find a job in France. The reality, if you want to join the job market in France, is that you need to speak French, even if it's a little bit, but you need to speak French. I'm, I mean, I prefer being honest with our, uh, you know, foreign candidates, because otherwise it's disillusion and, you know, it's, uh, it's, it's not positive. So when you join the SME program for the non-French speakers, we make it compulsory for you to take French courses. It's a plus if you arrive with already a French, uh, you know, average level. Uh, so if you intend to apply and if you really want to work in France, I encourage you to go to Alliance Française, for example, in your country and to start learning French. But within the SMIB, we really have uh, um, also language courses. And same thing during the first year, uh, because the first year is here to um, help people choose what they would like to do at the end of the year. So, for example, whether they would like to study uh, on our uh, APAC campus or whether they would like to go for a double degree. We have a double degree which is fully taught in Spanish. Uh, which is an MBA that you can do with EGADE Business School in Mexico. Um, so we also provide some Spanish courses during the first year uh, in case you, um, you, know, you consider or you would like to consider joining this double degree after the first year. So you see, I'm sorry, my answer is quite long, but I think it's just um, an illustration of what happens in SMIB. We have many, many options and many opportunities depending on what exactly you want to do. But things are compulsory depending on your choice. All right. You mentioned uh, a one year, a two years program. Uh, what's what's the best and what's the difference? Is it better for me to go in a one year program or in a two years program? How would you help us with that? Alors, it depends on your background and especially your previous diploma. Um, if you have a bachelor three, for example, or um, you cannot join for master two directly. You first have to do your master one and then you do your master two. If you already have a Master 1, you may join directly the Master 2. If you already have a Master 2, which was the case of Alem, uh, because she was an engineer, uh, you can join directly the second year. So this is, I would say, the normal you know, uh, way of thinking. Uh, then um, I usually get some questions about you know, uh, what would be the best for me, even if I have a Master 2, for example, but it's in law or it's in uh, language school or it's in literature. Um, and then I would say there is no rule of thumb here. Um, we really have a unique approach to candidates, one by one approach. Um, and I would say if you, are, if you face such a situation, the best is to get in touch with um, our uh, recruiters or even best with our student ambassadors, which could be contacted through the webpage, the ESSEC website. And here you can ask a question. Uh, usually what they do is they ask me what I think about the, the profile and then I provide a reply because I can understand, you know, that you need a little bit of more time to get used to what is business, um, what is this about, what are the job opportunities. When you have done literature, it's completely new. So, of course, it's, a, it's an option, but it's not compulsory. All right. Did you use, uh, Alem, did you use the website in order to get more info about the SMIB or how did you get in touch with the SMIB? 
Uh, actually, before, like when I was an engineer, I didn't know at all about ESTEC. <laughs> uh, I discovered the school because they came to our campus. Uh, so with HC EM Lyon also, so there were like three schools. And I had uh, some uh, a friend of mine who had like some friends and uh, he convinced me that it was like the best schools uh, in the world. I was like, okay, <laughs> I will check it. So I actually contacted some ambassadors and previous students uh, of my school who did this and also the consultants uh, to really understand the different tracks because it's a bit uh, difficult sometimes uh, to really see the difference between all of them, especially when you have like no uh, background or knowledge in business. Um, so yeah, I just talked to the ambassadors and uh, I felt uh, like it was the right place to be, like uh, in the values, uh, also with the content. Uh, I wanted something in international and uh, the students are international. The program is meant to be international. So uh, yeah, the best uh, suits for me. All right, now that we all want to go there, now that we want to go to the SMEB, I can see that there are 12, uh, t sorry, 10 rounds of admissions. Which one is the best? Uh, which one is the best? Tell me. Uh, well, first, you, you, you should not think in terms of rounds. Uh, we right. put rounds you know, to have deadlines, but we are in a continuous admission format in SMIP. So basically, uh, you apply and uh, I, I mean, people check your file, then I get your file, then I study the file, then I make the interview eventually. And, um, and the process can be as fast as one week, you know. Uh, when we have a lot of application files, of course, it's, it's longer than one week. But um, the idea is that, is that you are, we have an um, ongoing uh, application process. When is this the best to apply? Alors, if you want to apply to um, a very um, exclusive track, I would say, like the double degrees, for example, uh, we have very limited seats options for these tracks. So the sooner you apply, you know, the more odds you have at uh, being um, admitted in the track you want it. doesn't mean otherwise I would not admit you. It's just like if the track is full, then I will contact you and say, well, you know, what can we do? Because uh, you are a good element, but the full track is full. So what can we do to make, uh, to make this happen? Um, also, you have to imagine that we have a lot of applications. Uh, right now, I just checked this morning. Um, we are in, in November, beginning of November. I already have 400 people who have started an application. Okay, we are in November. People can apply until July. So 400 people for 200 seats, and we are only November. <laughs> So you right. see the, yeah, you see the, you see the, I mean, the pace. Uh, obviously, right now, I get 10, 15, 25 per week to review. For me, you know, I take a lot of time reviewing the files, taking, you know, taking time to understand the profiles. I contact people if I have a doubt. I mean, this is very easy. The moment I start getting 100 files per week, of course, I cannot be in such a custom, you know, a custom made approach. So the earlier you apply, the more chance you have uh, to also uh, see, I would say, a more human uh, uh, approach to your application file. Um, so I, I really recommend applying uh, as soon as you are ready. I don't see the point of for waiting. If you are ready, if you have taken your tests, if you have good scores, if your application file is ready, I mean, why would you wait? You know, there is no point in waiting. Just do it. All right, so your, your, your advice would be the earlier the better. As soon as yeah. you know, just apply. Well, is that yes. what you did, Alem? Or did you like apply straight away? Or when exactly what? <laughs> when, when did you apply? I'm not a good example. No, actually, I... <laughs> That's why uh, you're here. <laughs> I applied, uh, my application, I did it like really at the last round. And I think they received also the, the whole files the last day that uh, it was supposed to be. Uh, so now I actually, because of my studies, I didn't really have time to, um, I, I didn't have time to be honest. I was uh, doing an internship in Iceland, then I went to South Korea, then I came back, I had to go uh, doing an internship in Germany and I discovered they have to do a Taj Maj, uh, I didn't know nothing about it. So within two weeks I had to, to do this uh, Taj Maj and during my internship I applied. Uh, for ESSEC, so it, it took a lot of time. Actually, you can't. Um, this is what I, I advise: it's to 
actually just open the files, see the different questions because it takes time to have like the right word, the right answer um, uh, because you are limited actually. So yeah, I, I think uh, you should do it sooner <laughs> as possible. All right, sooner um, than you did. If you can actually. Is your advice yeah. <laughs> right, as a strategy consultant. <laughs> As a business analyst, All yeah, right. <laughs> that would be the best strategy. All right, um, what are and for what are the advantages of studying this master in France? I don't think you should think in terms of advantages or, draw or drawbacks. Um, I don't think this is a rational. I think it's more in terms of um, opportunities and again, what you would like to do afterwards. If you if you decide to study on our uh, you know Sergi uh, historic campus, um, this is because you would like to have a career which is more Western countries oriented. Uh, so you don't aim at working in China or in working in um, Africa or whatever. It's more about you know being in mature markets um, in those countries. Then, uh, of course, if you are studying on the history campus, you can take advantage of all the facilities which are provided by the school. And I cannot lie. I mean, here we have plenty of things. We have all the student clubs. We have all the sports facilities. Um, of course, a lot of alumni live in Paris as well, so it's easy to organize things. Um, besides, I also try to make um, some um, interactions with uh, the former uh, executive SMIM, uh, which uh, was existing in La Défense in executive education. It has been renamed, in, renamed sorry, International Business Development. But uh, I still try to make um, the classes uh, interact and uh, share some conferences and some moments. And this is something you can experience only if you come to this campus, of course. Um, but again, it's more in terms of opportunities, you know, it's not in terms of advantages. I think it's more what you make of the program. All right. And you, Alem, why did you pick Sergi instead of any other campuses that were available? Uh, actually, because I was traveling a lot, as I mentioned before, Iceland, South Korea and then Germany. And I experienced a bit of the Asian culture in uh, South Korea. I traveled a bit also in Japan. Um, and it wasn't like the culture that suited me the best. Uh, I knew that I wanted to work more with Western countries uh, and also to just refocus uh, and coming back to my home in a certain way. So yeah, this is the main reason I don't really want to work uh, fully like uh, in Asian uh, countries. All right. I have one, uh, one last question regarding the admission process uh, and, and floor, sorry. It's um, about the recommendation letter. What, uh, what should I put in those letters? Who can write them? The recommendation letter, yes, is a very good question. Uh, this is not the most important point, honestly, in the file for me. All right. Uh, it's, it's still important because, uh, well, but normally, if you if you are a clever person, you don't ask someone who hates you to recommend you. So I mean, usually the recommendation letter, <laughs> no. But usually, you know, they are very uh, positive. So it's not uh, really uh, the most important piece of the application file for me. And thank you for for asking this question, Guillaume, because I think it's very important for me to clarify. The most important piece of information is going to be in the questions Alem was mentioning. Right. Uh, I really what are the want, questions? Yeah, yes. Alors, you have several questions. The most important one, and I think this is where uh, I want to help candidates, um, you need to make me understand why you think this program is going to bring some added value to your curriculum. Uh, my objective is not to make people apply to this program. My objective is not to make people get an internship. The objective is to make people get a job after the internship. And if you want to get a job after the internship, it's not enough to study at ESSEC, it's not enough to study in SMIP program, it's not enough to, uh, to have wonderful schools and wonderful experiences. You need to have a logics behind uh, what you've done. You need to be able to explain your backbone, you know, the, 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 the red line uh, behind what you have done to an HR manager. And this is why it's so important for me to understand, you know, the logics behind why you would like to join this program, why this track so there is a question about the program and there is a question about the choice of the track. Why do you specifically want, for example, to study in the consult strategic consulting track? Sorry. Why is that? Is it just, you know, uh, because you woke up, you know, one day and you decided you would like to do that? Or is this something which is really, really, you know, resonating uh, with your uh, previous curriculum? Uh, if, you t if you have studied arts and you want to do strategic consulting at McKinsey, Honestly, 
I mean, I don't want to be negative, but this is probably not going to happen. Because it's not exactly, you know, the, this is not the um, proper, I would say, ideal curriculum HR managers are going to look after. So in that case, maybe we can build your path a little bit differently. So you need to, you know, to, to show me the consistency, the reasoning why. And this is far more important than the grades, far more important than the recommendation letters. Just make sure that you choose people who like you, not people who dislike you. All right. <laughs> it's just basic. Yeah. <laughs> But is, is it more like teachers or is it more like, uh, I don't know, employers, previous employers? Yes. Or just one uh, of each? Ideally, you would like, uh, yeah, ideally you would like, you would get one of each. Um, but, you know, I'm not super uh, demanding on that aspect. Uh, I myself, maybe you don't know, but I did the SNP. Uh, I'm also an alumni from the program and uh, I studied uh, in a very weird engineering school. I studied in the army, so I did saint uh, I mean. <laughs> Finding a professional to recommend me, you know, in the army was not super easy. So uh, I didn't ask a professional. I asked uh, only academics. So I think ideally you would get one of each, but depending on you, depending on your background, depending on many reasons, I don't make that as a compulsory uh, thing. All right. Well, thank you uh, very much for this answer. I think, I believe that every school has a stereotype, but we're going to dig a little bit closer to the truth and see what lies behind those cliches. All right, so it's about the cliche. Alem and Flo, you know this exercise. It's about knowing what was your preconception before you applied to the SME, before you studied in France uh, about strategy. Maybe Alem, you can start. Yeah, actually, I have two cliches. The first one will be more about business schools. Uh, I have heard a lot that the students in business schools are sharks. Like they just leave for the money. They will try to destroy you whenever they want, like they can also. Um, so yeah, I was even considered as like a traitor from uh, my engineer's colleagues <laughs> because I was going into the dark side. <laughs> Um, yeah, so actually, no, it's not true. Uh, I have met wonderful people who have really meaningful uh, professional career. One of our colleagues from SPIB is actually uh, doing an internship for the United Nations refugees in Geneva, which is uh, crazy, I think. Um, I have also some friends who want to work in museum and promote culture. So it's not just about the um, uh, you know, just the, the, the money, it's about being also a responsible leader. Um, yeah, there is more and more uh, awareness regarding that in business schools. And the second one, it's about, uh, so the, the SMIB uh, and Anne Flor, uh, maybe you can answer also to that, because in my school, uh, I have been told that it will, it's more difficult to get into Sergi campus than Singapore one. So I don't know. And, and is it it's true or it's false? No uh, idea. It's partially, it's partially true. I think it's just like we have less applicants in Singapore than in Sergi. Uh, so because there there are less applicants, it doesn't mean that it's it's easier to get in. But it's just like when you have, I mean, we reach later. You know the maximum ratio of people. All right. This is a, so it's not as competitive as studying in Sergi. No. All right. Okay, so, and what would be your cliché, anne -Flo? Um Maybe very briefly, I can also take two clichés. Um, I think one of the, of the clichés we may have, you may have when you join the SMIP program, is that it's a very generic and theoretical program. Uh, because of the title and because of strategy and because it's in Sergi. Um, and this is completely wrong uh, because this is, as I said at the beginning, you know, the difference with the Grand École, with the MIM program. Uh, we try to make things very, being very, very much applied. So even when students, just to give you an example, because I, I think it's important to visualize that when, when you study marketing in this program, you don't study marketing. You, you actually have a game. It's a business game, a virtual business game, which is done, uh, which we use to make you learn marketing. So it's, it's not, you know, you are on, uh, take marketing courses and take notes and PowerPoints and whatsoever. It's really you go into a, a learning by doing process. Uh, same thing when you learn to be a consultant in digital transformation, for example, uh, it's not about having, you know, hundreds of courses on innovation and transformation. 
uh, we make our students in the MDTI track, the so-called track, we make them uh, do a consulting mission uh, in partnership with Maestis, uh, which is a consulting company, which is our partner in this, uh, in this uh, vein. And uh, they, they started last week, by the way, we launched the program last week, the, the day before the confinement, the lockdown, basically. <laughs> we were very lucky to be live and uh, to, to, to launch the program. And they are going to uh, do a consulting mission uh, for real clients before the end of the academic year. So, I mean, here it's not about making a fake exercise, you know, for a course. It's really, you know, uh, learning, uh, hands in uh, what to do. The second very brief cliche I would like to share also with you is maybe uh, students think that there is a high discrepancy in between the ESSEC SMIP student and ESSEC MIM students, like they will never see other students than those from their program, which I think uh, can be true if you don't do anything beyond the program. But uh, you can really, really involve yourself in the school and you are more than welcome in the school to be involved. So you can take you know, part to all uh, student uh, clubs, you can uh, attend many conferences and we also try to make you be mixed with other students in some courses. Uh, so this is something which is uh, very important. No, you are not going to be in a closed uh, jar uh, when you do this meal. <laughs> all right, all right, that was like, four cliches. Alain, which track did you choose? Because we keep talking about tracks. Could you tell us which track you pick, please? Yeah, I have chosen the corporate track. All right. Um, why? Um, yes. Because I actually had an idea, like a professional career idea, and I completely changed my mind, of course. <laughs> uh, it happens a lot uh, in films. Uh, but I wanted to do like business development in uh, renewable energies. Uh, so yeah, it was completely like a corporate um, functions. Um, and also I really wanted to understand more about the corporate life, like how does a business really work? Uh, not just doing some consulting and uh, going like in different sector, but really inside the company, how does it work? So that's why I have chosen the, the corporate track. All right, thank you. And Flo, could you name the three tracks and tell us a bit the difference between them, please? Yes, so we have the strategic consulting track, the corporate strategy track, and the managing digital transformation and innovation, MDTI track. All right. So the difference in between the three tracks is really in terms of careers. Okay, so if you want to be a consultant, management consultant, strategy consultant, marketing consultant, whatever type of consultant, finance consultant, whatever, uh, you uh, I advise to take, to apply, sorry, to the strategy consulting track. In this track, we are going to provide you with the soft skills to become a consultant, and I would even say to apply to become a consultant. Okay, so we train our students on case crackings, for example. We also make uh, them being prepared for the pitch, uh, the one minute pitch like I did at the beginning, but about themselves, you know, when they want to apply to a consulting company. So there is a real process to apply in a consulting uh, company and we prepare them uh, to do such things in this track. Uh, the corporate strategy track is dedicated to students who would like to work, you know, in usual, I would say, uh, uh, for example, marketing, finance, um, asset management, uh, business development, I mean, various uh, areas within a company. So not in a consulting company, but in a usual company. Uh, can be luxury, can be fast moving consumer goods, can be energy, can be arts, can be uh, charities, but you know, in a real, uh, not a real, but I mean, in a usual environment, which is not consulting, uh, but always with a strategic and international flavor. Okay, so this is this track. So in this track, you have less preparation to the uh, interviews, for example, because it is not so much important, but you have more in-depth courses, like, for example, courses on uh, strategic growth management or courses on uh, supply chain management that you don't have when you take the consulting track. And the last one is the MDTI track. So as the name says, it's about learning how to manage digital innovation and, sorry, digital transformation and innovation. Uh, but innovation is also a transformation, so. 
And um, and you here in this track, we really, really, really focus on people who would like to work in uh, innovative environments. So it might be startups, it might be in knowledge labs, it might be in fab labs, it might be you know in uh, um, data uh, analytics or data predictive things. Uh, it might be in the consulting also in, in the consulting in this area, uh, but it's really, really people who are, I would say, uh, innovation seekers. Um, so yeah, so that would be the difference in between the three, three tracks. I hope I'm uh, I'm clear. Yeah, it was very, it was perfectly clear. I have one last question: Do they all have the same international recognition? Yes, um, because we deliver the same diploma. Uh, so it's not three different diploma; it's the same one, which okay. is a SMIB diploma, Master in SMIB, and then you have a track which is written. Um, the MDTI track is a more recent one. We created this track two years ago in partnership with Renault. Uh, and then for many reasons, including uh, coronavirus, uh, things have changed. And we are not anymore with Renault, but it's just to tell you that uh, the impulse was with a company. So it really uh, answered um, a problematic, you know, faced by managers. Uh, it was not a theoretical one. And uh, so it's younger, so people know a little bit less about it. But because we deliver the same program, the same diploma, I don't see any, uh, any differences. All right, perfect. Thank you very much for all those precisions. Uh, I believe that one pictures speak more than a thousand words, and that's what we're going to discover with Who Am I? I'm Flo Alem. It's about, it's who am I time. What does that mean? It means that I'm going to introduce you to three characters, three people that you might or might not know, but you're going to tell me, I'm going to tell you who they are first, and then you're going to tell me which one stands the best for the SMIB. So the three people are going to be, the first one is Edward Snowden. I'm sure you've, you've heard of him. Uh, he leaked some information from the CIA. The second one is uh, Magnus Carlsen. He is like the best chess player in the world, as we're speaking. And uh, there is Anna Wintour. I'm sure you've heard about her, so I probably don't need to introduce you to her. She's like the, the head editor of Vogue, and she is like very famous in, when it comes to fashion, to the fashion industry. Alan, maybe you want to start. I, I can see at your facial expression that you really love the three people. Maybe you can, <laughs> you want to start or you want to let the your, your teacher, your, your academic director start? Uh, yeah, just Anfa, go first. Uh, I think I need to, to think a bit. <laughs> uh, well, definitely not the first one. Uh, okay. Because we, we point a lot in SMIB on uh, ethics and right. um, transparency. And one, I would say, one of our core values for this program is trust and trust and, you know, yes, yeah, trust. Uh, I trust the students, they trust me, it's a trust matter, so definitely the first one doesn't end really into that area. This is my opinion, but... Um, Obviously. I, I Alem, you can choose differently. <laughs> <laughs> then uh, no, the I can agree. All right. So? So, I speak, I speak. Yes, yes, um, it's your turn. Yeah, sorry, sorry. So, um... Alors, Alain is going to laugh because I think she, she, she believes I will quote uh, Anna Winsor, uh, but this is not the one I'm going to quote. Um, I, I would prefer the second one, I don't know, Magnus, this is the first one? Magnus Carlsen, know. yeah, he's like the new Kasparov. I mean, chess is all about strategy, uh, and I do believe that this program is about strategy. Uh, when you choose, especially uh, the Sergi campus, this is because you want to do strategy in a controlled environment. The Western environment is more controlled than, you know, challenging economies like in APAC. Um, and uh, it's all also about um, anticipation. Uh, chess playing, I mean, I'm not a huge chess player, but I know that you need to anticipate. You know to have different scenarios available when you face, you know, your game. Uh, to try to understand if I do that, what will happen? And um, I think again, when you when you manage innovation, when you manage transformation, when you do consulting, when you are in a company and you do strategy, you need to not have a predetermined goal, but you need to be uh, flexible enough to let goals happen depending on the situation you face and the evolution of the situation. 
yet you need to be able to anticipate and uh, have a set of options depending on what happens. All right, good, that was a really clear answer. Alem, do you want to try or are you still not inspired? Uh, actually, just for me, uh, uh, like uh, Anne Flor is talking about strategy and how to anticipate, I always compare strategy uh, to uh, chess games because you have yes to anticipate but also move accordingly to your environment so the, the competitor just behind uh, like in front of you i mean so uh, if i can cheat i will mix the two last one because right. of course you need to be uh, a really good strategist. you have to um to think ahead to listen to your environment um yeah and for the, the the last part i will include the international environment like uh as nip students we really want to be global leaders um and try to grow as much as possible like businesses or even ourselves i mean um so yeah i will combine the last two i can't All choose right. one specifically yeah yeah you can don't, don't worry it's, it's fine it's going to be fine for this time uh, what, was, what I was trying to do by introducing you to the three people was like trying to find the perfect students for each tracks. And basically, well, maybe I was wrong then because I guess it was about ethics, but Edward Snowden would be really good, really good sorry, mm -hmm. in managing di digital transformation and innovation, you know, because like he wants to make things differently. Uh, Magnus Carlsen would be the perfect strategic consultant, I guess, like for the strategic consulting firm, uh, track, sorry. And then Anna Wintour for the corporate strategy and what she did with Vogue and like what she did with the, or the whole fashion industry. So I was just trying to find you the, the perfect students for each, for each tracks. Well, I guess I was wrong with Edward Snowden. Um, but, well, maybe they will apply. Um, so, how have you updated your courses, adapted your courses to the current situation and flow regarding, you know, the whole pandemic? Uh, in many directions. Um, alors, first of all, we, uh, we adapted everything, you know, uh, to be able to teach in a remote format. Um, so we, we did that for uh, Alem, uh, Alem class because basically we had to and then we, we pursued that uh, fortunately until now because now we are again in 100% remote. Mm -hmm. um, so when I say adapt, it's uh, an Alem, I think maybe you can give, give testimonies, but we, I try to uh, speak with a professor so it's not just a duplication of their class, you know, using Zoom or Google Meet or whatsoever. But it's really a redesign completely of, um, of, the, of the course so that it uh, remains inclusive, it remains um, interactive with the students. So this is, you know, um, from a pedagogical perspective, I think uh, this pandemic has been positive because it was an opportunity for all professors, at least in the SMIT program, to completely rethink their uh, program, the, rethink the way they teach. Um, so in my courses, for example, I will ask students to download an app uh, and I use an app uh, so that they can participate to the course and uh, what, they, what they write, you know, in the, in the thing is going to appear on the, on the Zoom and I have a virtual whiteboard and, you know, it's really uh, thinking out of the box in terms of pedagogical uh, materials. Then also uh, we adapted, I adapted um, the curriculum. Um, I offered additional courses uh, to, uh, to the class. It was not compulsory, of course, it was more uh, you know, because uh, people were locked in and they had nothing to do. So I was like, let's give them something, you know, to, uh, uh, to, 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 you know, to do and to, to feel like they are not completely abandoned during that pandemic. Um, and those courses and seminars, I've kept them for the ongoing, ongoing class and I will probably keep them uh, longer. So, for example, um, we had a seminar on uh, scenario building. Uh, to anticipate just the, um, what, what can I do when I face such a crisis. Uh, we have more seminars on HR management uh, with pandemic uh, or crisis uh, issues, I mean, that kind of contents. So um, those would be the two major um, adaptations. Um, and probably also maybe I can quote that, um, I have at least at my, uh, at my uh, level, um, I try to spend more time with the students uh, face to face uh, using Zoom and uh, WhatsApp, um, Messenger, what, whatever they want, Telegram. I mean, I think I have all things uh, installed in my, on my phone. Uh, but uh, I try to reassure themselves, to help them in their um, 
um, career thinking, uh, thesis development thinking, I mean, all those things. Um, is it going to remain after the pandemic? Uh, probably yes, because um, again, I'm, I'm, uh, that, that is very, and that is a mindset I try to give to the program. Um, I feel you should not see problems in life. You should see the opportunities arising from the problems. And I prefer uh, seeing the COVID-19 as an opportunity uh, for the program, for the school, for the students, uh, instead of seeing it as a, you know, as a negative thing and a wall you cannot climb. So yeah, we reinvented things. <laughs> All right, we are like time flies and we don't have much more time left, but I have two quick questions, one for you and one for you, Alem. The first one is, would a qualification from SX MIB qualify me to work in a big five? Of course, of course, we do have uh, many alumni working in those, uh, in those uh, companies. Uh, this Wednesday, we have a, a career, the career day, which is happening. Uh, the career day is something that is unique to SMIM, doesn't exist in MIM and Chronicle. So uh, these are alumni who come back to the campus normally. So today it's going, uh, this week it's going to be on Zoom, but they come back and they um, share what's behind their job title. So they share some information about what they do uh, in, the, in the daily job. You know? So we have one for consulting, one for corporate and one for innovation. And um, and this week, this Wednesday we have the consulting one and we have people coming from the B5. So um, it's not, uh, I mean, it's, uh, I don't even understand why you ask the question. It's normal. <laughs> no, I know, I know it's normal, but I mean, like students want to know, because like when you want to be like a strategy consultant, it could be like a dream. And I guess yeah. if the SMEB can like allows you to work in the best company ever, it can allow you to work in, I mean, the best company ever regarding the market and like the reputation. And, but I mean, if sure. it can allow yeah. you to work there, then it can allow you to work everywhere regarding the strategy business. So I think it's, yeah, it's, it's important to know that the answer is yes. Yeah, the answer is yes, but I would add that it also depends on your background. Uh, because the SMIB is very short, okay, if you only do the second year, basically you do six months, seven months of courses. So it's very short. So uh, if your background is not an engineering or data analytics background, honestly, it's going to be very hard to go to McKinsey and the same, okay? So uh, better do the Grand Ecole, take time, take three years, four years, and build, you know, your, your background and your curriculum to get there. If you are an engineer or if you already have a scientific background, there is no issue. So it's the background is also important. All right. One last question for you, Alain. It's, it's going to be a, a mix of two questions. It's how has the school helped you finding the job you have today? How have they helped you finding like, the internship you have today? And did you have a student life while studying at the SMIP? Did you have enough time to like maybe, I don't know, party in Sergi? I don't know. <laughs> okay, so I will answer to the last one first. Um, yeah, of course, uh, you have a like student life, and I took actually the opportunity uh, of doing this MIP to have like a better student life than my engineering uh, studies. Um, so of course, there is like a lot of parties at ESSEC, There is also a lot of organizations. Uh, that you can uh, involve in, but uh, also just participate as a guest. For example, international events or conferences from uh, really important people as such uh, previous presidents or even the justice, uh, the minister of justice. I mean, it's very wide. You can't get bored. Uh, there is many, many networking events also to discover the companies, the people. I went to all of them <laughs> and I really, really enjoyed them. <laughs> so, um, yeah, and of course you have, um, you can do some sports. I was actually doing some salsa dancing uh, to meet actually other people from different uh, uh, like program. Uh, I met meme students, I met uh, finance students. Uh, so yeah, you, you have actually uh, a student life and of course it's near to Paris. So during the weekend, uh, you go there, you have a drinks, you party. So not now, but yeah. And for the first one, uh, actually I got my internship uh, thanks to the SMIB networks. It was a, um, a previous student who uh, actually wanted to have a, uh, a SMIB. Uh, for the, the dispositions and I just applied, I talked to him, uh, I got them the manager, so just two quick little interviews and uh, yeah, it was very, very fast and uh, 
kind of like easy. <laughs> Thank you. Say. Thank you very much, Alem. It's time to wrap up any loose hands. It's time for extra time. All right, we only have one minute left. One minute, maybe Anne Flo, you will conclude. It's about telling us what you want to emphasize that already has been said or what you want to mention that hasn't been said already. It's your turn. The last minute is for you. Yeah, so maybe one thing I would like to um, stress is the fact that when you join the, the Master in SMIB, it's not only about choosing a program, it's also about choosing a mindset. And with the mindset comes the family. So in SMIB, we have, we have many alumni, okay? We also have the ESSEC alumni family, but it's really, really um, uh, joining a, a group of people who share some similar values, uh, similar ways of thinking. And hence, the network is working very well. We have our private alumni group on LinkedIn where people post, you know, job opportunities. Uh, we have some mentoring options. We have, I mean, many, many, many other things we know, which happen as part of this family. And I think this family mindset on a program which is as big as the SMIP program, because we still speak of 200 people, it's not, you know, 30 people. Uh, I think it's super important and reassuring because you are not a number in the school. You are really a unique person uh, with a unique uh, path. And if we need to take time to uh, make you evolve, to make you grow, to make you think about your career opportunities, we will take time. You know, it's not as in big uh, other uh, campuses or schools where you you feel like you are just anonymous. No one is anonymous, I think, in this program. And um, and I think this is something super important to keep in mind, yes. All right, thank you very much. Thank you, Anthro, for answering all my questions. Thank you, Alem, for answering all my questions. I hope you had a good time watching Campus Chanel. I hope now you know everything about the SMIB and you're going to apply. And I hope to see you soon. Goodbye.